Hi friends! I'm going to show you how to do the Down by the Bay Watermelon Craft. What you're going to need is a little cup of water, your paintbrush, your watercolor paints. They might look a little different than mine. I have a little napkin just in case I make a spill. And then a white piece of paper. And I also have a pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing just two sides of a triangle. And if you remember what a triangle shape looks like, it has three sides. So I'm going to draw just two of the sides of a triangle. And the last side is going to just have a little curve to it, like this. All right, you can set your pencil to the side. Now what you're going to do is take your paintbrush and find the color red. Because we know that watermelons are green on the outside and they're reddish pink on the inside. So I have red. Now you're going to want to start at the very tip of your watermelon slice. And you're just going to paint up towards the top of your slice. Don't worry if it looks a little bit messy. The goal is to have it darker at the point of the slice. Get all the paint off of your paintbrush. Now what you're going to do, you don't have to worry about dipping it, dipping it into the red anymore. You're just going to clean off your brush and just have water on it. And the water is going to spread the red color up so that it gets lighter. So we're getting that pink color. So you just keep dipping it, cleaning it off, just using the water so that this slice of watermelon goes from red to pink to almost white at the very top. Kind of bring it like that. You can leave a little bit of the top still white because that is where the top of the watermelon is going to be green. So clean off your water brush. It's just water on there. Find your green. Go ahead and get it nice and covered. And then see the curve to our triangle? You're going to follow along that curve that you made. And this is watercolor, so they're supposed to blend together. And it's okay if they blur together. That's the whole point. Okay, you can clean off your brush. If you want to just fill in, like I said, you can kind of blur it with just water. All right, and you have the color for your watermelon slice. Clean off your brush again in the water. And you're going to now make watermelon seeds. So you're going to find your brown. Just dip it in. And watermelon seeds are pretty tiny. So you're just going to make little tiny seeds in there now. My brown isn't that dark. I think I'm going to use a little bit of the darker brown I have here. So try to use dark brown or black if you have black. I don't have black, but I think if I go, there we go. My dark brown works really well. So you just make little, they're not really circles, more like ovoids. Kind of put them all over inside your watermelon slice. Good thing I'm not eating my watermelon. It's full of seeds. Okay. There you have it. Your down by the bay watermelon slice. So cute. You want to take a bite out of it. And there you go. You can cover the whole page if you want of slices. You can even make one giant watermelon. Just on the outside, not sliced up. That's up to you. But now you have something to sing with when we sing Down by the Bay. So have fun. 
All right, friends, now I'm going to show you how to make the Mr. Sun craft. What you will need is just a small plate from your kitchen, uh, some yellow washable paint, and just kind of um, pour it just a small amount. It looks like an egg. <laughs> a small amount on your plate. Um, a pair of scissors, um, child save scissors would be a good choice. So ask your parents for help with this one if they haven't already set out some scissors for you. Um, a white piece of paper and then a cardboard insert to a toilet paper roll. If you have a paper towel roll, it's longer. That's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, this is gonna be what we use to paint with. If you don't have any of these, I will show you how to also do the Mr. Sun craft with a fork from your kitchen. Okay, so you're gonna take your toilet paper roll and your scissors, and you're just gonna make some cuts to about halfway towards the center of your toilet paper roll, and they can be where you want them, just a few. Just make cuts all the way around until you get back to your first cut. So it should look like this. And then you're just gonna take each piece and bend it back just a little bit so it sticks out. It already looks like a sun or a flower. This could be something cute if you also use different colors. You can use pink or red and make flowers with this. You'll see. You're going to take your toilet paper roll and you're going to stamp it into the yellow paint. Okay, you want to make sure and get each little piece covered with paint. You can check and make sure you can you can put your finger down there and kind of press it in without getting paint. I'd be surprised, but it's okay if we get messy. We can always clean it up. All right. I don't want it to drift, but now look, all the pieces are covered. And all you have to do is stamp your paper. Again, you can use your fingers to push it down each piece and then bring it back up. And you have yourself a fun. Now if you wanted to, you can always take a paintbrush and fill in the center. Um, that's up to you. You can keep stamping and make a whole bunch of different sense. Just like that. Now, if you didn't have the toilet paper roll, take a fork from your kitchen and dip it into the yellow paint. And then on your paper, you're just going to bring it out like you're painting. You're just going to brush it out. And you're going to do a whole bunch of brushes just like this. You can see what I'm doing. It looks silly right now. But just wait. And make sure you have a brush going every which way. And you have yourself a sun that you painted with a fork. Either way works great. Either way can also turn into a different craft, maybe flowers or fireworks. So I want you to have as much fun as possible. And then you can bring out your Mr. Suns when we sing our song. All right, now I'm going to show you how to make your bear hunt binoculars. What you'll need for this craft is some clear tape, some markers, some string if you want it, if you have it, and then two uh, paper towel, towel rolls. Um, if you don't have these, you could also ask a parent to help you find other things in the house that are these shapes like um, Pringle cans or cans that a parent helps you take the top and bottom off with. Um, there's 
different ways to make your binoculars, but today I'm just going to use these two toilet paper rolls because that's what I have at home, um, but you might have something else. So the first thing I want to do, and this um, could take a little while for you too, is you're going to decorate your paper towel rolls with the markers. So this can look however you want. These are your binoculars that you're going to take with you on all your bear hunts. So I've decided on my binoculars, I want a heart. So I'm going to draw a big heart. I chose red. Now I think I'm going to draw a butterfly. And that is some wings, a body, and some antennae. And then I think that one's done. You can add as much as you want or as little as you want. I just have two things on mine. On this one, I think I'll draw a sun with yellow. There's my sun. I'm going to fill it in. Beautiful. It can be whatever you want. And I think on the other side, I'm going to draw a person. And it's going to be a stick figure because I don't know how to draw actual people. But I have the face, body, two arms, two feet, legs, two eyes, and smiling mouth, and a cute little nose. That's me when I go on my bear hunts. Okay, so like I said, you can cover your binoculars with whatever drawings you want. Um, you can pause the video now and go ahead and take your time with that. I'm going to go ahead and move on because I'm done coloring. And I'm going to take the tape. I'm going to get a big piece. And I'm going to start taping together my binoculars. And since it's clear tape, you'll still be able to see all the drawings you have. So I'm just going to wrap it around. You want the binoculars to be right next to each other and the tape's going to hold them together. So I got this bottom part. I'm going to get another big piece of tape. And I'm going to come around the front and put those together. Ooh, tape is sticky. Okay. I have the front side. Now I'm going to do the other side. Just want to keep them together as best you can. You can ask the parent for help with this. If you need help getting the tape off, I know it can be tricky. Or if you need help taping them together. They might also have some other ideas to put the binoculars together. But to keep it simple, I just have tape. So once you get your binoculars taped together, it's going to look like this. You can still see all your beautiful art. And this is where you can stop. You've got your binoculars. If you feel like you're going to be traveling when taking a bear hunt, which, let's face it, we probably are, you can always make a necklace to attach to your binoculars. This is just a piece of string, a piece of yarn, um, anything you can think of that you can put around your neck and attach to your binoculars. So I'm going to attach it with tape. Um, if you have some stronger tape or if you have a parent that can help you maybe with glue to set aside and dry, that might be a little bit stronger to hold the, the yarn. So I'm going to give it my best try with some tape and I'm just going to put it inside one binocular and tape it in there. Just like that. And then I'm going to take the other side and do the same thing. there. Put some tape in there. It does not have to be perfect. This is your art. These are your binoculars and they're going to look exactly how you made them. There you go. And these are your bear hunt binoculars. Happy hunting!